Andy, thanks for the time. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Uh, Takeaway from Baylor. I know it's a general, broad question, but anything from that game aside from obviously the loss that kind of you take away from for the Schroeder team kind of going forward? Well, I thought the offense was on track. They did what they wanted to do for the most part. Let's remember it's still a young team with most of the players never having played together, a lot of them never having played Division I college football before, uh, and a new offensive coordinator, new terminology, a lot of things new. So this is going to be growing pains, and unfortunately the growing pains are happening against good teams from Power 5 conference schools. But overall, to be able to see B.J. Daniels rush for 90 yards, to see Jalen Rhodes, who hadn't practiced a whole lot during the week last week, come into the game and run the ball well, that's the identity of UTSA. And if they can continue to run it, there'll be some good things down the the road. Speaking of B.J. Daniels, I know for folks like you who follow the team closely, probably not a surprise that he's getting, he's playing one, he's getting a, a lot of playing time. Maybe to the average fan, Who's this B.J. Daniels guy? I thought that Jalen was going to be the guy. B.J.'s really made a, made a case for himself to get more playing time as the season progresses. Well, the evolution of UTSA running backs. David Glasgow was the first real, and Evans Okacha, the first two. The next one was, was Jarvion Williams and Jalen Rhodes. And if Jalen could stay 100% healthy, I think he'd be a, a star player, and maybe he will someday in the NFL. B.J. Daniels is the next guy up, and he's got the size and the speed, and He doesn't look that imposing when he's not in pads, but he looks a lot bigger in pads, and he runs 4-5, 4-4. I think that's his speed, and he's got that speed and power. The touchdown he scored, uh, he got that on extra effort. And right now the goal line where they had to get in the end zone because they were out of timeouts, and they they, they chose to run the ball from the two-yard line. So I think he's going to be a special player if he has a healthy career. Look at Cordo Grundy from these first two games. Tough because, as you mentioned, he's going against Power 5 schools. So he's not playing schools that, oh, by the way, he should be you know, lighting the world on fire against. But that being said, given his competition through the first two games of Cesc Cordell. Well, I think from week one to week two, far better and far more comfortable. You can kind of tell sometimes when a quarterback is a little antsy in the, in the, uh, in the backfield or has the happy feet. He didn't have that in this game. Even when Baylor would bring an all-out blitz and he had to throw a screen pass or get rid of the ball, for the most part, he did it well. There was one play where he took a sack where he was just inches away from getting out of that play and either running for the first down or forcing the defense to come up where he could throw for it. And unfortunately, he got tripped up, but he's getting closer and closer to being the leader of this team that I think everybody wants. And from what I've been able to tell, that leader, those leadership skills are there. Now he just has to perform on the field. When you do good things on the field, your teammates rally around that. Yeah, a lot being asked of him, especially following Dalton Sturm, a guy who'd been the starting quarterback for the better part of three years. Frank said after the game on Saturday, there's no moral victories. And you wouldn't expect Frank to say anything else. That being said, the reality of starting with Kansas State, starting with Baylor, I don't think any, but even the most diehard UTSA fan didn't think they'd go 2-0 and to start mm-hmm. the season. So given that there's no moral victories, what can Frank take away that's a positive going into Kansas State? Well, I think the fact that they scored 20 points, they had opportunities for others that they didn't convert on third down or had a penalty or a negative play that created that. Those things can be fixed. Uh, the schedule is not in their favor right now, with even with Kansas State coming up. It does get for lack of a better word, easier, if you just look at the schools on paper, but no game is easy. Winning is always a hard thing. Uh, and No coach has ever gone into a game thinking that this is a gimme win, even when it is a gimme win. They're very nervous until that game is out, out, of, uh, out of reach. And so I think there's a lot of positives just from the fact that they played better, and I think they'll play better against Kansas State, win or lose, and that though playing these kind, of, these kind of schools, they're not going to see schools this good, with the possible exception of North Texas in Conference USA. The rest of their schedule is not nearly as good as any of these three teams. So they're, got, they're not going to see anything in that conference schedule that's going to uh, surprise them having seen what they've seen from these Power 5 schools. You're watching Sports Tonight, San Antonio's only nightly 30-minute sportscast with exclusive sports coverage you won't find anywhere else.